welcome to another interesting edition of Personality Profile Show on Ghana Districts TV. My name is Emmanuel Frimpon. So, and stood in the year 1997. He is the corner of the people of Manyakrobo in the Eastern Region. He is also the president of the Eastern Regional House of Chiefs. By now, I'm sure you know the person that I'm referring to. My guest for this edition is His Royal Majesty Nene Sakite II. And then you are welcome to Personality Profile Show on Ghana Districts TV. Thank you. 25 years as a corner of the people of Manyakobo. How do you feel, sir? I feel good. I like what I'm doing. I would not exchange it for anything else. You're doing something that will help your people make sure that the heritage, our culture, and everything else is moving on right. So I like what I'm doing, and I'm proud of it. So, so 25 years is, yes. 25 years is no joke. What are some of the significant achievements you can post? I have a whole list. About 35, and I'm sure there's a whole lot. I think at least the major ones, 35, that I could think of. When I first came in, I noticed that the youth, a whole lot of them have difficulties going to school with um, assistance, financial assistance and everything. So I mobilized myself and some friends and some organizations. And I came up with the first educational scholarship program for my people. And that's the first in Ghana, 1998. Educational Endowment Fund. I was, the, I was the first to establish that. And since then, we were able to help about 1,500 people, students. Um, the demand went down when the free secondary school education started. It went down, but now it's going up with tertiary students. And that's one of the things that I'm proud of, knowing that I'm helping others to get a future someday. Um, one of the things that I did also when I came in first, we noticed that there is an outbreak of HIV AIDS. If I let this go, then who are going to be, when they start dying left and right, who are going to be my people to, to be their corner? So I took it seriously, mobilized funds for Education, awareness, support, and care. It took a while before it sunk in. It took a while before people realized that, yes, we have something called HIV. And I'm glad that we did. Otherwise, there would have been an exodus of people dying left and right. And they, were accused, they would be accusing others for probably doing something to them and all that. But no, your lifestyle got you there. Um, I was the first to contact an organization in the U.S. to introduce 
antiretroviral drugs to Ghana. And they gave it to us first. My hospitals here, they gave it to us before Kolebu and all the hospitals like Kumasi, before they got it. I brought antiretroviral drugs to Ghana first. And we... Which year is this? Either 99 or, or 2000s, yes. And we had a celebration. We, we actually had something like a mini deba to introduce it here. And it has helped a lot. That was the time when people realized that HIV AIDS is around here and we must mobilize ourselves to lifestyle change and also um, at least be careful about who you're dealing with and everything. So, I mean, that was, uh, I, I mean, these are some of the things that I'm specifically proud of. And I can go and on, on and on and on and on. If you want me, I will. I mean, I have 35. <laughs> and, and, and I'm proud of all those things. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm also working with government to help bring out, I mean, to help out, to help out in so many ways. I was the, um, a Pawnian member, council member of national health. Actually, we started the national health insurance under President Kufu. He appointed me as a trustee of the national health um, scheme. And we did everything to start with to make it what it is today. And there are so many things that we can talk about as if you want. So, so this is a good tone for our discussion. I, I would like to know if one should ask who is Nene Sakite? Nene Sakite. I'm the second. Okay, the second. I'm the second. Because my great grandfather was the first. King Sakite the first. Nene Sakite the second. As I'm saying, uh, he's the great grandson of King Sagite the first, and my parents. I'll say they were the best around here and around Ghana and in the world. They instilled in me. the qualities of hard work. You know, you don't complain about anything. Just work and do, do. If, you, if you are serious about what you want in life, you will get it if you work hard. And that's what I did. They were Christians. Presbyterians. So I attended Presbyterian Primary School, Presbyterian Middle Boys School, Presbyterian Secondary School. Presec. Presec. No. Okay. Or do I say Presec? Yes. Presec was here for about 30 years before he moved to Legon. So, yes. So it was just here. This is my house. Pisek was here. So just so around the where corner. Where and this is where it started. Where the foundation okay. of Legon started from here. So the foundation started from here. And a whole lot of dignitaries came out of this small campus 
and not just um, not just politicians, but scientists. When you hear about Prisak science, Prisak started long, long time ago, where our um, science labs look like this place here. I mean, mud houses, and, but they were the best. The students were the best in West Africa. So, so yes. what did you study while preset? Oh, science. Science. And, well, both. We, we had some um, we had varieties of courses that but I was mostly science and math and, and, and you know, religion and all that. Then I left Prisak, went to Prempe. Then from Prempe, I came to work for about a year or a year and a half. And then got an admission to a university in the United States. I worked hard to get my bachelor's in economics and a master's in economic, in international economic development. Then another master's of business administration. Then I work as a consultant. Whilst I was a consultant, I was also teaching I was an adjunct teaching at the university level, and it helped. Okay. So, so let's come back to you. Mm -hmm. are, are you the only son of your kids? Yes. All my siblings. I was the only son, and the youngest, and the spoiled one. Yeah, I had sisters. All older than me, and I have a sister now, 90 years old, in the U.S. Yeah, She's yeah. not here. Yeah. Born into a, a royal family. Yes. There some challenges you encountered growing up. Were there some challenges? challenges you growing up. It doesn't matter where you are born into. Whether you are born into rich or poor, royal family or a farmer's house or something, there are challenges everywhere that you must be aware of and depending on how you were brought up you'll be able to face all those challenges so I was brought up in a way that I don't think a whole lot of my schoolmates except those who grew up around here but a whole lot of my schoolmates never knew under any circumstances that I was a royal. Yes. Is it something you wanted to keep secret? No, no. It's nothing you wanted to keep secret. You were brought up that way, not to show off about anything. Just be part of the community. Just be part of the community whether in school or wherever you are, be part of that community. And when you are part of the community, you are better off that way. So my schoolmates, just when I became the colonel, and the, I didn't, I, you didn't show any sign of, I said, what do you want me to show? Go around, go, go, go around campus and, Start feeling, show off, start feeling pompous and all that. No, they never knew. Um, it wasn't something designed, but it was rather the way I was brought up. That's it. It wasn't designed. So, so, so share with us some interesting, uh, some interesting moments along your education. Some interesting times. Oh, that's a whole lot. That's a whole. Share with us a few. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 
mostly in the US or here because I had both the interesting some of the interesting things are when I was in class one yeah I'm you you said you want to know so I'm telling you I mean what and some of the interesting things uh -huh. one of my elders today told me 25 years ago when I became the colonel then he said to me you know we were sitting down talking and he came to congratulate me for you know my installation as the corner of Manya Krubo. and he looked at me and he said do you do you remember do you remember when we were in class one and class two anytime we had a play you know anytime we had a play in our school you are the king and I'm the Ochiami and <laughs> And I said, are you sure? He said, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten the name of this teacher and that teacher? And when somebody messes up, they will go and slap their behind and everything. And, and uh, have you forgotten? I said, oh, I remember, I remember. I remember. And you are King Solomon. And you sit in, they will bring a big chair and you, you are all like this. And they will hold you and put you in there. And and uh, he said we started doing that since class one, and he was the Ochiami, and now he's one of my my elders, and wow. was started long time ago. I'm sitting here doing it, um, but you know he never occurred to me in any way that. This will happen. It was just a play. I mean, in school, as kids, and we went about our ways. We went about, you know, our different ways and all that. And that's it. And these are some of the, some of the interesting but, but, but before, things. Before you move to the US, yeah. the interesting things you. Um, in the U.S. Uh, are there some teachers you still remember back then in school who helped you shape your life? Of course. There are a few of them. Okay. Do you read? And <laughs> some of them. <laughs> Long time ago, 60, 60 something years ago, you know, as the former student, we've been talking about when some of your classmates come by, you talk about school and everything else. We discuss teachers and some of the ways they treated us, and some were good, some were wicked, some were. That's what we thought, that we were wicked, but the training was good. During your time in school, was there any leadership position that you took up that oh, yeah. should your Several. title as, as a chief? Several. Well, I, I was, you see, as I was saying, the training throughout my formative years had been the same. Very consistent from home, the same Presbyterian principles with traditional customary rules and regulations. The conversation is getting more and more interesting, but at this point, we'll go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Are you worried about how to get to all the assemblies, contact of MMDCs or assembly members and other assembly officials or lodging of complaints among others? Simply call the toll-free number on all networks and you'll be provided with excellent services. And hey, remember, it's a free call on all networks. We all come back from our quick commercial break and we are still here with Nene Sakiti II who is the corner of Manyako, the Eastern region. Nene, you're welcome once again. So, Thank so you. Looking, looking at your position now as the corner of Manyako. And I'm also the president, the president of the Eastern Region House of Chiefs. House of Chiefs. Yeah. Do you, really, do you really see the youth of today taking keen interest in uh, cultural heritage? Um, I think I do, but we have to do a better job to encourage them to embrace their heritage or cultural heritage better. You see, when you want the youth, and I'm saying this now for the next generation, when you want the youth to participate fully in anything, you have to start very early in life, in the life of that kid. If you want them to start playing the drums, you have to start early. What do you think we are not doing right as a country? Do you really think we should put it as part of our curriculum? Cultural heritage is the best thing you can teach your children or you can introduce anywhere and not just in the classroom. Everywhere. Every institution, every community, every gathering. And because it's culture. Even God is of culture. He created it in his own image. They have the Chinese, when you see them, you can identify them. They have the Japanese, when you see them, you can identify them. When you see an African, you can identify the African. When you see the American, you can also okay. identify the American. these communities or all this I mean yeah global communities they are trying so much to sell their culture to the outside world to embrace it so they should start imitating them and when you start imitating them you start buying their products their goods and services to create employment in their homes but not in your home it will create employment for them whilst your home is suffering let us appreciate what we got and let the outside world Embrace it. Let the outside world, you know, at least like what they see in us. Let them come to Ghana, learn more about it, and let's try in one way or the other to export our culture also for outside this country so we can earn foreign exchange. Then we create job opportunities for the youth around here. So having experienced chieftaincy, how would you describe the chieftaincy institution in our current democratic setting? Or would you say democracy is pushing chieftaincy to the background? The worst mistake any society can make, especially Ghana or Africa, is to try pushing away traditional leadership. That's the worst mistake. You go around the world, 
when you go around the world anywhere that whether in Europe or in Africa anywhere there's traditional leadership there is always peace over there there's always peace over there and the economy is moving along swiftly oh they may have problems yes the whole world is having economic problems now but when traditional leadership prevails your security is safe go to Botswana, go to south africa um, go to britain go to belgium go to all the places where they have kingdoms and you come to Ghana to where we have traditional leadership and nobody will come to my domain and tell me he or she will wage war against Krobos. No, it won't happen. Not in my time. So you I mean for people knowing that we are safe. And I don't think anybody will also from Ghana, we wage war against any other traditional leader today, anywhere. So we are safe. So if people come from outside to threaten our security, I bet you the traditional leadership will be the institution that will stand firm against that foe. So traditional leadership is very very important and democracy cannot push traditional leadership away so Nene, are you experiencing land litigations in your area and how are you resolving such issues these issues come over here i mean at, in my arbitration sections or oh, 80 percent of all the arbitration sections, mostly land, land issues. And I'm sure if you go to the courts right now, no, 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 no. Okay. If you go to the high courts right now, land litigations will be up the roof. Yes. And that's, again, that's where we come in. That's where traditional leadership comes in. What can you contribute to um, lessening all this land litigation issues? Mostly that's where traditional leadership comes in. And it will help. It will help that way. But if you know, the, but if you, you know, Parliament makes the laws and regulations for us to follow without our input, well, it's not working. We have to be part of the governing process with legislative powers as, as far as I'm concerned we must be part of leadership so we know that uh, chief tenancy comes with a lot of restrictions so how are you managing your social life again I was brought up in this so I could see things around me my uncles how they wander around things. Then coming back to me, it's not any different. This is something that you lived with all your lifetime. So it's not gonna change. I will not be somebody else. I wanna be me. So when I'm, you know, when I say that I'm me, there's a whole lot that I do that interests me. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I do. I mean, I can go into writing and just using my head, thinking and putting things down. It helps me so much. I get so much joy 
you know, um, in most of my writing. You have to impart knowledge to the next generation. Tell them what is going on. Tell them how at least they should think about our nation and what you're not telling them what they must do but they should learn from your experiences so they can map out um, their own future but at least you must give them the foundation you must give them the education you must give them you must give them what they need to be among the best around the world so your last few words to the general public especially the youth we have a beautiful country the whole of africa I would rather be a Ghanaian than any other African country. We have what it takes to make this country a haven to all. And people want to come here. People want to come and live here. People see our society and they think we look good, we have everything we need, but sometimes we don't know we do, and we start crying about things. No, that's a better days. You know, there are better days ahead of us. So we should try as much as possible to take advantage of what we have and not be looking at what somebody else has. No, we have so much to talk about in Ghana and we have so much to be proud of. We must try to make this country ours. We must try to strive hard and make, I mean, and let others see the goodness in us. Let others see that we are using our own resources to deal with our own situation and we are doing it the right way and I think we can I think we can I mean again you go around the world and you see Ghanaians helping other societies flourish some of them don't want to come here or they've been here before and they've been frustrated so right away they go back out we, are, we have Ghanaians all over the world who would like to come back here to come and help and we should back on them to come back here to help we must all rally behind good people who have this country at heart and they want to make a difference. Yeah. Thank you very much. It has been a good, interesting time with you. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So it has been a wonderful discussion with His Royal Majesty Nene Sakiti II, Kono of Manyakrobo in the Eastern region. But do join me once again on this same channel. My name is Imano Frempon. Thanks for watching.